So, uh, we've talked about low tier tournament quite a bit. I'm going to be posting it on the Discord very shortly. You got about two weeks to get your entries in. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you are free to sign up. It is one monster per person. Uh, there is no limit. So don't feel stressed if you're like, oh, I don't know who I want to sign up right now. Don't worry about it. You do have time. Uh, I'm going to leave them open probably until the 23rd. 23rd is probably when I'm going to close it. And then tournament will start on the 25th. So this is what we were looking at earlier, you know? This is what the old tier list looked like. What's going to change? Probably not much. So if you watch the last tier list, uh, the way we went about this is we just talked about each monster uh, fairly in depth. I didn't, I'm not going to talk as in depth. We're not going to talk about all the numbers and all that stuff. We're going to try and get this done in less than two hours. We're going to try and get it done in about half an hour. We went and we looked at all the texts of every monster and we did all that fun stuff. We're not going to do that again this time. I'm going to talk a little bit more generally about it because people have a better understanding now. So I'm going to talk about concepts more than actual specifics. Unless the specific is the reason it's in the tier it's in. Yeah, I guess this isn't in order or anything, eh? Okay, so Pixie. Uh, or rather, we'll do uh, Tiger. Tiger is definitely up here. Kamui is so good. Kamui with a 6 Guts rate has one of the best power builds of any monster in the entire game. Most of you haven't seen it because I've had it hard banned since the beginning of uh, the league. The beginning of everything, but it's... I guess you'll have to just believe me. Stab coming off a 6 Guts rate is... Seems like a mistake. They shouldn't have done it. Pixie. Pixie still has a lot of issues. I I don't think moving Pixie above bottom tier is a good idea. I think Pixie belongs where it belongs. I think Pixie is pretty bad. Mochi. Mochi too. Mochi is the absolute worst monster in the game. Um, I don't think that'll change much. Like we were saying, Naga. Naga's still better than Tiger. The best Naga's better than the best Tiger, but they're both just like oppressively strong they're so good man they're so good they do everything they want to do and they're better than most other monsters at the things they want to do but you thought metal Nerd was good for like 1.5 years but then it clicked dude we didn't even talk about metal Nerd. uh do i need to talk about metal Nerd? it's objectively the best monster in the game with uh the ability to run the best tank build out of any monster in the game and the best speed build out of any monster in the game it can do whatever it wants whenever it wants it does a ton of withering for no reason it has really, really cheap techs that have incredibly good numbers attached to them. It's just, it's insane. It's got attacks that would be good on a monster with like an 18 guts rate, but it's got a six guts rate. It's got a guts rate three times faster than that. So when you're able to gain five guts a second and you're able to swing uh, shit like straight every two seconds, if you want, if you can string swing straight every two seconds and wither 10 guts from your opponent, they never get to attack. It's like the hardest anti-tank monster in the game. There's nothing you can do to beat it. I mean, you can get lucky, but that's basically it. Uh, Arrowhead. Arrowhead, we had Arrowhead in like uh, high tier, but not top tier last time. I do think Arrowhead is an S tier monster. I think Arrowhead is incredibly powerful. I'm not really sure what else to say about it. We already know. Everyone's seen Okane Kane. We saw, uh, we've seen Cool Lobster do well. We've seen, what's it? Lob Zombie does well. Dude, everybody who runs a... Arrowhead does well. It's a very, very strong monster. Uh, I already knew it was strong, and it still, um, it still outdid my expectations by a pretty significant amount. I guess I should also talk about now. Maybe I'll put a little addendum here, and I'll throw this at the beginning of the video. But um, this is not for the lightweight specific. Lightweight is its own meta, uh, completely different from everything else right now, and it is so hard to measure what's good in the lightweight because there's basically only one build that's happening right now and people are starting to counter pick that build really hard like basically tanking is the only thing that matters and people are starting to run zero skill builds and doing really well so um i think that one's still in too much flux to really talk about and uh we're going to be focusing on the more standardized stack apps like the 3500 so that's basically what this is we're doing 3500 stack app so heavyweight division eventually essentially Eventually is the wrong word. Uh, mock, mock was I had mock at the lowest. I think mock is here. I think mock is better than mochi. I don't think there's a single monster in the game worse than mochi at their absolute peak. Uh, I think mochi's terrible, and I think mock is really bad. But he's not worse than this. Worm, uh, worm is not as bad as these monsters, but worm is is pretty rough. 
it's I don't think Worm's a great monster, unfortunately, because I love Worm, uh, but its attacks are just very expensive and they don't do anything. He doesn't actually do a ton of damage. He doesn't have anything that's exceptionally like offensive. His strongest attack is Roll Attack at 50, which is like borderline not even S force. I don't know. It, it's you think he would be like kind of a heavy monster that would like swing big, but he doesn't really. And uh, his accurate attacks are very expensive and don't do a ton of damage. I I think he just kind of does a little bit of everything, but nothing well. Whereas we got Zoom, who does a little bit of everything, and, you know, he's pretty good at it. He's pretty good. This guy here is not too bad. He does a little bit of everything like we were just talking about with Worm, but he's got a couple of different outs. He's got really high damage potential on his intelligence side. Uh, his power side is very low cost, low committal. It's a little bit risky as well, but it, his power build's got a mix of uh, high accuracy techs and high risk techs, which... When you're never spending more than like 25 guts from like maybe 30 guts is pretty good kato's up next i think kato is probably just behind zoom this might change a little bit as time goes on but kato's a solid monster all the monsters in b tier are solid monsters we got uh metalner up here is metalner he's he's metalner he's metalner he's the best nobody can beat metalner these monsters here have like subbreeds that are bannable because they're so strong um, and then and this is like the top tier S a is monsters who are very powerful uh, Maybe ha struggle against the monsters in S tier B rank are monsters that are Solid and are gonna win about 50% of the time. They're pretty solid Nothing really bad about them and then monsters down here uh, You need to start getting lucky to win or you need to have a specific counter build and I guess that's still luck like rolling into monsters that your monster counters. Kato, he's got a couple of good builds. His power build is really consistent. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but you know, it gets the job done. It's a good journeyman build. You know, he he puts in the nine to five. Like he's not rich, but he brings home the money to like support his family. And that's kind of what like the slash claws in drill claw build does. Also one of the only monsters who can run like a really um, effective crit only build, which is pretty sick. Uh, b -clon. I think b -clon is probably, probably here. I don't think b -clon has changed much. Um, he's great, he's got Rolling Bomb, which is kind of like Hidden Sting on Arrowhead, which is one of the reasons why Arrowhead is so good. And then the rest of his stuff kind of complements that. He's got some nukes, he's got some accurate low damage, uh, low cost stuff. It all really hinges on Rolling Bomb though. Rolling Bomb's fantastic. Hopper. I had Hopper around here last time. I think I think Hopper is a little bit worse than I initially expected. Um, he's been underperforming a little bit. I don't think Hopper is fantastic. I think he's okay. Like maybe I will put him at the end of this here, but I don't know, we'll see. I'll change things as we get there. Plant, Plant is definitely better than Hopper. I don't think it's as good as these three. It's definitely better than Worm. Um, Power Plant has been a pretty consistent build. It's not the best thing in the world, but you know, it's been pretty good. Hasn't been too bad. There's not a lot to talk about though. Power Plant just kind of does Power Plant things. You hit Face Drill, you hope it doesn't spam slap. Intelligence build, we haven't seen anything from Plant, but that's because of that slot two not being able to be covered up and Life Drain not really being strong enough to carry Plant otherwise. But I think maybe it could do it. So Jill, Jill I think is better than Plant for sure. I don't think it's at the level of these three or like it's pretty close. The 11 Guts rate Jill is pretty strong. Uh, you can run a really good mixed attacker build in metas that allow for it. And then even without that, punch combo is pretty solid. Punch combo will win a lot of games. It's pretty good. Ape, I think, is probably up here. I think Ape has proven itself as a very consistent monster. It's not like a win more than half the time. Like, oh, there's an Ape. It's probably got the advantage. It's not like that, but it's got like three or four different builds, which is really crazy for a monster with like four power attacks <laughs> or five power attacks. Its intelligence build is a little bit better than I expected it to be in this format. Uh, Big Banana is still kind of a crappy tech, but it's not unusable like it is in vanilla. So, you know, Ape, uh, I, th Ape I think is a lot better than I initially expected it to be. Is Baku better than Plant? I don't know. Baku, I'm gonna put it there for now. I think Baku is kind of risky. 
Baku needs to land the diving press. If it lands the diving press, it wins, and if it misses it, it loses. And that's basically what it comes down to with him. You're rolling a 50-50, or a 35-65. Plant has a little bit more consistency, but I don't know. It's it, This whole area gets kind of nebulous. Maybe we'll change it later. Uh, Niton? I'll put Niton above these two. I think Niton is kind of the same as Baku, except... The accuracy thing is way higher on Niton. Still has the one hit kill potential with Violent Shell. Or if it doesn't kill, it does so much withering that it just keeps it alive, keeps it in the fight. Does a pretty good job. I think Niton's a little bit better than I expected. I had it at the very bottom of mid tier last time, and I think it's closer to the middle. Uh, okay, so Bajaral. I think Bajaral's better than Baku. I think it's better than Plant. It's better than Niton. Maybe. I don't I don't think Bajaral's fantastic, but I think it's a little bit better than I initially thought it was. I don't know, man. Bajaro's weird. From what I remember, don't remember any well-performing Bajaro's. I mean, that's the thing, right? Bajaro's kind of got the same syndrome as Baku. These monsters are very similar in that they kind of need to land the 35 to hit. Hookshot? Yeah, Hookshot's uh, in a meta where nobody has any speed, though. Uh, that's not really a thing you can always rely on. I think it might be worse than Plant. I don't know. I think the thing with Power Plant, though, is that it runs into tanks and it just kind of falls apart. That's the only real issue. Bajaro's all about chain moves, as far as you can tell. It needs to land a lot of things. Might have to even up B tier later? Yeah, we will. We will. We'll see. But this is like, this is where most monsters live. This is like the, yeah, this monster is pretty good tier. Everything here is like, yeah, it's okay. And down here, it's like you start getting to like real issues. Like this guy. I think Duckin is probably better than Hopper. Yeah, I, I gotta put Hopper down here. I can't have Hopper in the same tier as these other things. Duckin is pretty weak. Duckin gets shafted by the 45 guts rate rule we already know about that it just needs to not use those techs and unfortunately in slot two the techs it covers up beak thrust with are bad like duck and dance and surprise are not very good it needs to land all of those eye beams and those maximal beams to win and not only does it need to do that it also needs to stay away from the first two slots i don't know it needs to land hook exactly this might even, it might even be worth putting these monsters down in here because this is like, like you're hoping for luck to make it happen here. Power Duckin seems neat. Power Duckin doesn't do any damage, which is unfortunate because I really like Power Duckin too. Um, Ghost, I think Ghost is probably, Ghost is probably like this. It's same, well, it's not the same as this. It's, he's got his own set of issues. Really fast guts rate, but doesn't do anything. Like doesn't do any damage. I don't know. I. Ghost is just really... I really wish Ghost was better. Ghost is pretty fucking awful. <laughs> think Ghost is in the absolute bottom? You think Ghost is down here? I don't know if Ghost is that bad. I think Ghost is, is like, demonstrably better than these IMO. Does it put Ghost with Pixie? We've seen Ghost do fairly well, though. The peanut gallery doesn't have the most consistent outlook on what makes a monster good, what makes a monster bad. You're like, oh, no, no results, no results. And this monster did pretty good? Ah, put it at the bottom. Yeah, I don't think Ghost is as bad. I think Ghost is significantly better than Pixie. I do too. I think Ghost is like pretty happy here. I don't know if it's better than Hopper. It might not be better than Hopper, but it might not even be better than Worm. This is pretty close. I would say Worm might be better than Ghost. Uh, but yeah, he just doesn't do any damage. It's unfortunate. Really fast gust rate and does nothing with it. Uh, Zilla. I think Zilla is probably top of C tier. It's probably the best C tier monster. I don't think putting it any higher than that makes any sense. I, It's so unfortunate. I love this monster. I love this monster. I love this monster. I love this monster. And they're all just kind of trash and it's unfortunate. But I think he's got some decent damage potential. Knocking up is pretty good. Uh, Tail Lashes at least has some utility. Just stay away from Rolling Press. Its basics are okay, but you're probably trying to hit diving press honestly if you're trying to win trying to hit diving press or charge Brazilla rush even but those are all kind of uh not worth the cost which is unfortunate gaboo gaboo's up here gaboo's better than all these other monsters we've talked about uh gaboo is a very strong monster it only really has like one real build which is kind of unfortunate but that build is pretty good that build is pretty strong and its intelligence build while obviously not as good as its power build uh, still has some utility. It's a little bit risky, a little bit low damage, but it's pretty fun. Ulky Man could take a stunner better than Vince McMahon, 100%. Vince McMahon taking the stunner. This is Vince McMahon taking the stunner. He's fucking down here. Dragon? 
Dragon's an S tier. Dragon is very strong. We had him um, with Arrowhead down here last time, and I knew they were both powerful, but I did underestimate how powerful they were. They've both done nothing but good things. Dragon is absolutely one of the best monsters in this game. Is Dragon better or worse than Arrowhead? It's worse. It's definitely worse than Arrowhead. Dragon is not going to sit here. Dragon is going to move down as we start populating this. Gel is pretty solid. Gel is, I would say, is Gel better than Dragon? Maybe. I'm going to say, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say Gel is better than Dragon. Oh, JP thinks Gel is better than Dragon? Maybe I'm wrong then. Gel is so good. Gel's at least S. It's just, where do I put him? We'll move stuff around later. I'll take a look and I'll be like, well, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know what's happening here. Fantastic text. Everything he has is good. I don't know. I don't know what to say about him. I just made that video. Everything I said in the video is still relevant. He's a good monster. And a fun design. Mew? Mew is a good monster as well. It's. I don't think it's at the level of these three, but it's way better than this. Um, we'll probably throw a couple more monsters in here. Mew will like go down the list a little bit. But yeah, I think it's up here. Like Durahan, for example. I think Durahan is... Durahan's probably here. Maybe even... Maybe even that. I, I think I'm I'm comfortable saying Durahan is better than Dragon. I'm okay with that. Durahan has a lot of good techs. Durahan's basics are fantastic. He's got really good heavy techs. He's one of the best anti-tanks in the game. Uh, he's got triple stabs and stuff, which really fuck up speed monsters. He's got such a good variety of techs. He's got slash combo, which is a game winner for 35 guts. And if you miss, okay, whatever. I spent 35 guts and I missed. But if you hit it, you win. Uh, so yeah, I think he deserves to be there. Galley... Yeah, I think we're going to keep Galley here. We're probably going to move some of the S tier monsters down, but this is, I'm going to put Galley there for now. I think Galley is about the same level as Mew. Maybe not, maybe like build dependent, but I do think it's it's up there. Galley is very versatile. You can do a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Doesn't Galley have really low lifespan? He does. Lowest in the game tied with Dragon, Monol, Joker, but that doesn't really matter for competitive play too much. Monol, uh, I think Monol is... I don't know. I'm torn on this. I, my my opinion on some of this stuff has changed pretty drastically lately. I think there's going to be a little bit of a drastic switch up here. I do think I'm going to do this instead. I think we're seeing a little bit of a break here. I think Yali is strong. I just don't know if it's as good as these. Monol, same thing. Monol and Yali are basically like identical in uh, their viability. They're both really, really good. Might be better than Galley. I'm going to say no, but it is very similar. Yeah, Monol, same sort of thing. He's got attacks for any occasion. Really good. Don't think Mew is a tier above Monol and Galley. I'm thinking I might move Mew down as well, but we'll get there. Hanger, Hanger's probably here. I don't think that's changed much. He's below these two. He's good. He's got good techs. You have Hammerfall, which is a pretty cheap all-purpose move that hits everyone. I mean, if it hits. Uh, his basics are fantastic. You can go with drill shots if you really want to. Laser cutter's not too bad. You know, he's got variety. He's pretty good. Uh, Suezo. Suezo is up here. This is like... Suezo is fantastic. Both his power build and intelligence build are incredibly strong. You know, you've seen Suezo. He's got like 10 techs and all of them are good. What What's Suezo's worst tech? Licking? It's definitely licking, but then after that, I don't know, everything else is usable depending on your build. Great as a tank, great as a speed monster, lots of great stuff. Uh, Phoenix, I'm going to put Phoenix here. Uh, Power Phoenix is still the best Phoenix build in heavyweight, and it's good. It Rapid Beaks is so strong against speed monsters, and it does a good chunk against tanks as well. Beak uh, only costs, like, what is it, 13? That shit is really good. Uh, Phoenix we've seen in Lightweight is just brutal, just so strong, but that's in a mixed attacker format. You can run a pretty solid Intelligence Phoenix in Heavyweight as well, but I do think uh, the power attacks are probably a little bit. Rapid Beak is one of the best moves in the entire game. I, I'm inclined to, to agree, and I think Beak is the best basic attack in the entire game. Uh, 13 cost, 19 force. I don't know why they did that. That shit's nuts. Centaur I think is up here as well. You got uh, Meteor Drive for the one-hit kill potential. Just that sniper build, the sniper that starts with um, triple stabs and uh, death thrust, that's fucked. That's it. That's your build already. You don't even need to do anything. That shit is busted. He's probably up here. He's probably better than Phoenix. I'm going to do that. Raki? I think I... 
Uh, I'm torn. I want to put Raki. We'll put Raki here. Is Raki better than these guys? I don't know. He's better than Hanger, I would say. And yeah, now that we're, I'm seeing this, I think putting Mew there is probably the way to go. I think that's that probably makes a little bit more sense. Mew is very strong. Mew is very, very powerful. But I this this stuff is kind of broken. Everything in S and above is like doesn't really have any weaknesses. It doesn't have any weaknesses, but its strengths aren't like massively overtuned like they are here and above. And then this is where like you start to have some weaknesses, and then more weaknesses, and then only weaknesses. Drill Assault is risky, but it also hurts. That's about all there is to say about Naga. I think you're talking about Drill Assault, and you're like, that's all there is to say about Naga. That's his worst power attack by like a wide margin. Undine, Undine is still, Undine is still like almost here. I almost want to do that. I almost want to put Undine in S plus. See, Undine is S because we aren't banning any of her techs yet. That's fair. You know, that's a that's actually a very good and important point. Nothing on Undine has been banned yet, so. So Undine is IMO unequivocally the strongest monster with nothing bannable at the moment. But it's very close. Like I might actually ban some stuff in the future. She's so good. Both Siren and Mermaid have downsides, they do. One can't get grit and one has real. Uh Joker. I wanna say Joker is like here in this meta. I don't know. Does anyone have anything to say about Joker? He's got four fucking techs and they're all insane. If you can run a build that's just your two basic techs and like win the tournament with it, like that monster is a good. That's a good ass monster. Say he's better than Arrowhead? I don't think. Uh, maybe. I'm torn. I think he might be. Yeah, we'll do that. Because to be fair, I was also debating banning subbreeds for Joker as well. So we'll say that. We'll say Joker's up there. It's all about death final. Death final. <laughs> It's the reason he's so good. Joker's not that good against speed bonds. Joker's fine against speed bonds. Joker has a 50% chance to swing for good damage and withering at no cost. I think I'm gonna go back to my original. I'm gonna say Arrowhead's stronger. I can see the argument for both, but that's... I'm, I'm just gonna stick it to that, because I think we could be going back and forth all day. Color Pandora? I think Color Pandora is probably maybe weaker than Dragon. It's been underperforming a little bit. I think it's strong. I think it's a strong monster, but... Uh, I don't know. I think I'm okay putting it there. I think that's pretty solid. I think uh, Durahan has a little bit more usability. There's only one real like hyper competitive build with Color Pandora, and that's you get Giant Whip and Kamikaze. And if you're focusing on Giant Whip, you could miss that, and that could be really, really bad for you. And Color Pandora's basics are pretty shit. So uh, I know, despite the meme of Face Attack being incredibly good, uh, his basics are kind of awful. So. He really needs to be landing those kamikazes constantly. Golem. Golem's good, but I don't think Golem's as good as I thought he was going to be coming into this. Golem is arguably the best monster in vanilla after Naga and Metalner, but in this, I think he's hurt a little bit by the 45 guts limit removal. Other monsters get to abuse it a lot more than him. He kind of has to focus on slap. So while I would have him like up here normally, I think he's probably... I would say something like this, or this. Uh, I think Golem is probably fine there. I think he's still very strong. Is he better than Color Pandora? I don't want to say he's better than Color Pandora. We'll put him there. Even Dragon, is he better than Dragon? I don't even know if he's better than Dragon in this. I think I'm more afraid of Dragon than I am of Golem. I think I want to put Phoenix down here. I'm looking at this, and I don't think Phoenix really fits in the rest of the S tiers. I think Phoenix is a very strong monster, but I don't think it's at this level, you know? We got one more monster. We got hair. Uh, I think hair is like here. I think hair is a really strong monster still. I think hair is fantastic. Hair has always been a top tier monster in every version of the game. And this is no different. And while I had him a little bit higher originally, I think he's still, I think he's still really good. I think he's still very consistent. You can get the straight line to get uh, good damage against speed monsters. He's got an insane uh, anti-tank stuff with uh, Heavy Smash and Kung Fu Kick and Big Bang. And there's a lot of stuff you can do with hair. He's got a million great techs. Uh, okay, so let's take a look real quick, see if we want to move anything around. This, things make sense. But like I said, these monsters have no weaknesses um, and are on the chopping block to be banned. Um, these monsters have no weaknesses but are not on the chopping block to be banned. I think this is looking pretty good. I think a lot of this stuff is interchangeable, but these are like 
the strongest monsters. Feels weird having this many monsters in like an S tier. Maybe an A plus tier, that might be the way to do it. Um, if I did S and even A, uh, a, a plus is probably fine. Then A, B, C. Yeah, that, I think that makes more sense. Because S tier implies it's like you need to be using this, right? Make D to E and make, move everything else down. No, I don't want to go that far. Because that also works here because like these monsters are really good. But these monsters are marginally better. Once you hit S, that's like another jump, right? So that makes sense. The thing about making tiers is that like you could just make the letters whatever you want, but coming from like FGC background, like these letters do actually mean something. It's not just like this is better than this is better than this. A is like these are your good like tournament winning monsters. B is like stuff has weaknesses and then C and below is like this shit sucks or is like really weak in one aspect. And then S is like probably shouldn't be allowed to play this. And yeah, and I think all of this is like, this is tournament winning monsters, but like this stuff up here is like especially good. But once you get down to like E and F and all that, like it's completely meaningless. You're just making differentiations to notify that like this sucks, but like this really sucks. And this one really sucks. Golem did really well in Macho's Cup. Golem's a great monster. Golem is fantastic. He dropped significantly. I had him like up here at the beginning of the game's life. Now, I, I don't think he's as good as I thought, but I think he's fantastic. Don't see any golems with actual optimal techs. It's rare. It is rare. He's got so many techs and people just want to do fun stuff. Me included. So you can't blame him. But you can also, you also can't use that as uh, any sort of implication of like how good or bad he is, you know? Golem is the same tier as Undine. I mean, I got the old one right here. This is what it looked like. So like, not a lot of this stuff has changed. Like, this guy's way up, this guy's way up. Uh, Golem, I think, is a lot worse. Uh, Color Pandora, I said, was a little bit worse. I moved Joker way up. Uh, Raki dropped quite a bit. Durahan, I moved up. Um, well, yeah, this like a lot of this is pretty similar, you know? So for the low-tier tourney, is, it's going to be Ape and Below. Yeah, so for the low-tier tourney, we're running B, C, and D. Which doesn't actually change anything, I don't believe. Because originally plan was to do uh, zoom and down so everything uh, at Gabu and above was cut off and I don't think any of this has changed it's just changed order and we added an additional tier everything in A plus is the usual championship contender I agree yeah that's kind of how I wanted to set it up so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that